Hey, I know we've been taking apart a lot of consoles recently, but today that's going to change. We're going to get back to playing some games. So today, we're going to get out our Genesis. We're going to get out our Genesis, and we're going to play some Sonic. While we're back here plugging this shit in, here's some trivia for you. Maybe you're in the same boat as me, and the AV cable for your Genesis is completely fucked up. Well, guess what? You can actually use the RF box off of an original Nintendo, and it'll work with your Genesis. Yeah, it's true. It'll work with a lot of other stuff, too. Pretty much anything that's got an RF jack. It'll work with uh, the Master System, Ataris, the TRS-80, all kinds of weird shit. One of the problems with the Genesis is that during its time, it really wasn't re renowned for a whole heck of a lot, except for Sonic titles and sports titles. And the problem with that is it was owned by the kinds of people who like sports titles. That means if you wind up finding a used Genesis in this day and age, it's probably going to be pretty beat up. And uh, if you want to get it hooked up and running, usually you're forced to improvise. Finding consoles is easy. If you don't care what kind of condition they're in, they'll usually still work. But good luck trying to find controllers that have been thrown across the room a billion times, and good luck trying to find cables for it that are actually in good enough shape to work. The Sonic franchise is a bit of an oddity. Despite being little more than a marketing mascot designed by a focus group to be cooler than Mario, Sonic actually managed to crank out a slew of really great games in his early days on the Genesis. The Sonic franchise and its accompanying mythos have since devolved into something, well, something less than stellar. I can't say I wasn't inspired to take a look back at Sonic's Golden Age by this comic I got on this year's free comic book day, which highlights perfectly just what a clusterfuck the Sonic franchise has become. Let's take a step back to that Golden Age, though. Back to that time when Sonic was still awesome and his games were still good. The great thing about the original Sonic games was that not only did they push the Genesis to its limits with fantastic artwork and clever programming, but they were also fun. Sonic always had huge multipath levels, the likes of which gamers had never seen before. Bonus levels that made the gotta catch em all aspect of collecting the Chaos Emeralds actually fun. And above all, some of the greatest boss fights and boss designs ever. Playing through the Sonic games for the first time, it was always a great treat to see what kind of off-the-wall shit Doc Botnick was going to throw at you. Plus, there were plenty of bosses in the later Sonic games that were puzzles, that made you think about how you were going to beat them. This was a big deal back in the day, especially for a game that was pretty much a pure action title. So it's worth a retrospective not only to go back and look at some of the early Sonic games, but also to demonstrate some bugs that will help show us how they work. We're going to jump right into this with a classic. We're going to start off with Sonic 2. Sonic 2 is arguably the entry in the series where Sonic really got good, and it's probably the first Sonic game that a lot of people have fond memories of. What I'm going to show you today is well and truly a bug, which is something that's kind of rare. It's also a useful bug, which is something that's even rarer. We all know the Sonic 2 Chaos Emerald dance. You get 50 rings, you go to one of those gold post things, and you jump on the little star halo, and it's off to the halfpipe with you to grab a Chaos Emerald. This was great, and the halfpipe levels were kind of fun. But we all lamented the lack of a save feature in Sonic 2 that meant every time we restarted the game, we lost all our emeralds. This is a bug that allows you to keep your Chaos Emeralds when you reset. This means you can keep replaying the Emerald Hill Zone, and you can get all seven emeralds in one shot, so you can have all of them when it's time to face the first boss. To start with, you're going to need at least one Chaos Emerald, otherwise there's no point. And I'm pretty sure we all know how to do that by now. Here I am in the half-pipe bonus stage, and as you can see from the colors, it's the first one. Anybody who's played Sonic 2 for a while knows that you step through all the stages in order, and you always start with the first one when you start a new game. Now this is where the trick comes in. I've got the game paused on the TV here so I can show you what's going to happen. But in order to activate this bug, you have to poke the reset button on your Genesis. You don't want to power it off. There's a very specific reason for this. This is because the reset button is a software reset on the Genesis. It doesn't actually cut power to the system like the reset button on the NES does and other consoles. It tells the processor to reset, but it doesn't force the memory to lose all of its variable information. So I'm just going to tap the reset button. And we'll see that the game's restarted. But we didn't get that license by Sega screen because we didn't hard reboot. So when this happens, you know that you've been able to uh, enable the bug. This is another important part. When you start your new game, you have to do it from that semi-hidden options menu. If you start your game from the title screen, it really will reset everything and you'll lose all your emeralds. So don't do that. Now that I've restarted, I'm going to go back into the first goalpost for a bonus stage. And look at this. 
I've started off magically in the second bonus stage. If I continue all the way to the end of this, you'd see that I actually have two Chaos Emeralds, because I've kept the one that I got in the first playthrough. And you can, of course, repeat this ad infinitum. If you have enough time on your hands and you really feel like doing it, you can actually get all seven Chaos Emeralds in the very first stage and then go whoop Robotnik's ass for the rest of the game. The reason that this works is, as I said before, because the reset button on the Genesis is just a software reset. But also, going into that option screen is important, because when you do so, it doesn't force the game to reinitialize all of its variables. There's a reason for that, and that's because you can use the sound test to enter cheat codes, and if the game reset everything and always sent you back to level 1 with no emeralds and no nothing, then it would also reset whatever the cheat codes did. So this little bug has slipped by, and you can actually use it to uh, get ahead in the game without using the codes themselves. Now, Sonic 2 was a big deal when it came out, but what was an even bigger deal was Sonic 3. This was a project that was so ambitious that it actually had to be split into two titles, between itself and Sonic and & Knuckles. When the game was released, there were even rumors that Michael Jackson was going to be the person to compose the music for it. At the time, it was huge. Sonic 3 also brought the Sonic franchise to a whole new level. It had the largest levels, the most creative bosses, and arguably the best music out of the entire series up until that point. But, it's also one of the few games where in the development cycle is almost as interesting as the game itself. Because of the way that the games had to be split between the two titles, there's actually a lot of data from Sonic & Knuckles inside the Sonic 3 cart as it was released, which didn't get cut from the final game, and can be viewed by anyone who's motivated enough to take a look at the giblets of how the game actually works. The way the game split was handled was ingenious. The Sonic & Knuckles cartridge actually has another cartridge connector on the top, into which you can add any other Sega Genesis game. Not only could you add Sonic 3 to the Sonic & Knuckles cartridge to complete the game, but the programmers also added a mode where you could stick Sonic 2 on top and play through the original Sonic 2 game as Knuckles. You can get a little glimpse of the fact that this split was planned a little bit ahead of time. If you use the Sonic 3 cartridge, you can actually use a bug to uh, access some Sonic & Knuckles data that's still left on the original cart. In the Hydra City Zone, you can actually hear the boss music from Sonic & Knuckles instead of the boss music that we only knew from Sonic 3 at the time of its release. And I'll show you how. I'm approaching the first boss of the Hydra City Zone. I want you to pay particular attention to the music. This is the mini-boss music from Sonic 3. After I lose my shield here, all I have to do is let myself start drowning, which will change the music to that Jaws kind of theme. As soon as I jump back out of the water, the music should resume where it left off, but it doesn't. Listen carefully. This is the mini-boss music from Sonic & Knuckles, a game which, when Sonic 3 was released, wasn't even out yet. The way the Sonic 3 & Knuckles game combining works is actually quite ingenious. All cartridge-based consoles since the dark ages of the Atari 2600 have used a technique called bank switching in order to allow the cartridges to hold more data. Most consoles can't even hope to load or even address all of the ROM data in a cartridge at one time. The amount of data they can access at once is limited by their bus width, which in turn defines their addressing space, which is usually quite small to keep costs down. Bank switching is a method by which the uh, console can read different banks or blocks of ROM data at one time and kind of move the aperture around of where it can read so it can load all the data in increments from the ROM data in the cartridge. There have been many explanations of how the Sonic 3 and Knuckles game combining works over the years, all fueled by speculation from when the game was first released, and most of it is wrong. You'll hear things about how the Sonic 3 cartridge is supposedly quote-unquote patched by the Sonic and Knuckles cart, or how the system uses one cartridge half the time and the other cartridge the other half of the time. That's all bunk. What really happens is the game engine is being used from the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, but this engine is smart enough to know how to use the external data connector and knows where the data is located on the previously released Sonic 3 cartridge, so it can actually bank switch out to the other cartridge and load the music, graphics, and level resources that it needs in order to use the Sonic 3 levels. We're fast running out of time, but I'll close by mentioning that the addition of Knuckles into Sonic 2 works very much the same way as the addition of Sonic 3 onto Sonic and Knuckles. There's a copy of the Sonic 2 game engine inside Sonic & Knuckles that's got all the extra Knuckles stuff, 
and it does the same bank switching trick out to the data in the Sonic 2 cartridge to make it all happen. Now that I've talked your ear off about hedgehogs, we're out of time. So, for now, this is Zero signing off a game hack. See you next week.